What's at stake basically is whether or not the signature domestic achievement of the Obama administration uh, is sustained. And there's, there's two questions. One, one has to do with what's called the individual mandate or the minimum coverage provision, which basically says most Americans, a few exceptions, by 2014 have to buy some minimal level of health insurance or pay a penalty. And the other question, which is sort of a sleeper, uh, Congress also uh, drastically expanded the eligibility for Medicaid, expanded the, the Medicaid roles, um, uh, it, which is part of the expansion of insurance to, to make the act work. Some are saying one of the arguments is that this Medicaid expansion and the, and the, and the requirement that if the states don't go along, they'll use, lose all, all Medicaid federal funding is, a, uh, is a, too much of a coercion. So those are the two questions. Some people say that this penalty that you have to pay if you don't buy insurance is really a tax. And if it's a tax, there's a 19th century law that basically says you can't challenge a tax until you're forced to pay it. This thing doesn't kick in until 2014. So it, it may be that no one can challenge it until April 15, 2015, when the penalty would be due as part of the tax returns. So that's the first question the court's gonna, gonna hear argument on. Monday, it's gonna hear 90 minutes of argument on whether or not the case is ripe for review. And it's conceivable, I think it's unlikely, but it's conceivable that the justices might say, we're not ready to decide this case. We don't have any authority to decide it for another couple of years. Uh, one, one, one court of appeals, the Fourth Circuit, took that position, and the dissenting judge in the D.C. Circuit took that position as well. I think most people think they're going to go ahead and decide it. If the court strikes down the individual mandate, does the whole act go out with it? Or is the individual mandate, what the lawyers say, is it severable? Can you, can you throw out that part of the act and the rest of it, the rest of it is, is still good law? And the court is going to owe 90 minutes to that question. The Court of Appeals for the, Force, for the 11th Circuit, whose decision is being reviewed, uh, said uh, it was severable. You could, the act could stand even if the mandate goes. Uh, the, the district judge in that case said no, it's, he, he called it, it's like a finely tuned watch. And you can't take one part of the watch out and have the thing survive. This case has gotten a lot of attention because of the, the partisan political ramifications, the Obama administration versus the Republicans. How this case comes out, though, and this is important, is going to have a lot to say about American constitutional policy. It will either affirm that, indeed, Congress's authority to regulate commerce, anyway, to regulate economic activity under the Commerce Clause is indeed as extensive as most people have thought it is since the New Deal. If it decides otherwise, though, we'll see a real turning point. Up to now, the court has pretty well let Congress do whatever it wants under the Commerce Clause when it's regulating economic activity. It's pulled back a bit on non-economic activity. The Violence Against Women Act. But as far as economic activity goes, Congress has had a pretty free hand. If the court strikes down the individual mandate, our constitutional law will take a 180 degree turn.